Church, say amen. Amen. We ask that you will govern yourselves accordingly to the announcements as they have been given. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. If the Lord has been good to you, why don't you stand on your feet and give God some praise? Come on, SNBC. Let's give God some worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome all our visitors and guests to the sanctuary of praise here at SNBC. For the first and second time, we welcome you. We greet you. We go on behalf of our pastor, and our SNBC family. We welcome you. We thank God for you. If you're worshiping with us virtually, let us know who you are, where you're from, so we can connect with you on a more intimate and personal level. Amen. You're welcome to the sanctuary of praise. Let's welcome our visitors and guests. Amen. 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 We know the Lord has been good. You may be seated. Amen. We know the Lord has been good. He has supplied all of our needs. He is a provider. He is a sustainer. He is God. Amen. Amen. How many know that you can depend on the Lord on today? Amen. When you can't depend on no one else, you can always depend on Jesus. Amen. Amen. There are several ways you can give here at SNBC. We want you to understand that we're grateful for your financial contributions. You can give through Cash, cash App. You can give through PayPal, Givelify, or you can mail your tithe and offering to the church. However you choose to give, we just want to make sure that you understand that you can give these ways. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the city. Thank you for your tithing offering. We thank you for how you continue to give out of sacrifice and obedience. It's because your tithing offering, we're able to do ministry here at Second Baptist. Amen. Thank you so much as our tithing offering come into this place. Let's bless the Lord with a hand clap of thanks. If you would now stand as we prepare to recite our vision statement. With clarity and with conviction on today, our vision statement reminds us of who we are as a local church. Man, we want to recite this with clarity and with conviction on today. You can find it on the screen behind me. I see a people of God being one with God's vision for his kingdom. We see people worshiping, praising, and serving him. I see the saved reaching the unsaved and uncommitted. We see people of all creeds, nations, and genders learning about him. I see compassion at work in the lives of people. We see God's principles at work in every arena of life. I see a community of believers in daily communion with the creator of life. Let us all say together, we, we see, see transformation, transformation and let, let it start with, with me. me. Put your hands together Amen. for our vision statement on today. Amen. If you would remain standing as we hear the word of the Lord read to us on today, coming from Psalm 8, verses 1 through 9. David says, O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Who have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may be silenced, the enemies and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that thou are mindful of him, and the son of man that you shall visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over all the works of your hands. 
You have put all things under his feet. All the sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, that pass through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how excellent is your name yes. above all the earth. Yes, Lord. Yes. If you know the Lord's yes. name is excellent, let's give him yes. some praise. Yes. If you know that at his name, yes. every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess. Give him some praise. If you know his name is still great, give him some worship on today. Amen. We serve a mighty God. Amen. We'll be blessed with prayer by our very own Elder Hams this morning. If you be so kind, let us, let us bow our heads. And allow the Spirit of God to remove anything that will block you from communicating with the Lord this morning. Yes. This world, this state, this community, we need prayer. Let us pray. Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, first of all, Lord, thank you. Oh, Lord, when each one of us look back over our lives, even up to this point, you've been so good to us. There were days, Lord, that we didn't know which way to go. It seemed like trouble was on every hand. But oh God, you made a way out of no way. And we said thank you. We've gathered here this morning, Lord, for the sole purpose of worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, if there's anything that's contrary to your will or your way in our lives, we ask that you remove it right now. Yes, Lord. Lord, give us a clear pathway yes. to your throne and to your grace. Yes. Oh, Lord, help us today. Come to realize, Lord, this world is full of darkness. We know you as the bright and the morning star. Yes, yes, Lord. Oh, God, help us. Help us in everything we say and do. Yes, Lord. And we'll be mindful to always give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Yes. Lord, search each one of our homes, our lives, our community. Yes. And give us that peace that surpasses all our understanding. Please, Jesus. Yes. Oh, God, where there's sickness, we know you can heal us. Yes. Where there's confusion, we know you can bring peace. Yes. Lord, this hour, touch your servant. Give him a powerful word that will upset everything that's contrary to the will of God for our lives. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give him preaching power. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The kind of power, Lord, that we can't look at nobody but ourselves. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bless him, Father. Please. Bless his wife, bless his family. Yes, Lord. And then, Lord, bless this church. You said, and I read it, unless the Lord builds the house, everything else is in vain. So, Lord God, just for a little while this morning, come in the midst of this service. And if there's one this morning, Lord, that don't know that you stand in the pardon of their sin, touch their heart, touch their mind. 
and let them come forward except Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior of their lives. Yes. And Father, when it's all over down here, yes. when this world can't afford us a home no more, let us all not be weary. Let us all not be troubled. For you promise that there is a city that sits on 12 foundations. And one of these days, we all get to go there and say howdy no more. And there'll be no more goodbyes. And we'll rest, rest from each one of our labors in that glorious city called heaven. But while we're here, give us the peace, the strength, let us continue to love one another yes, and continue to pray to you, yes, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes, we pray this name in the name of Jesus the Christ. And the church said, Amen. Jesus is bigger than cancer, it's bigger than broken relationships, it's bigger than financial strain and stress. When we call upon the name of Jesus, things start to change.
than any other name. Yes, yes, yes. Anything you can think of. Yes. That name is higher. Whatever you're going through today, that name is higher. Yeah, yeah. The name of Jesus melts everything that the enemy tries to throw yes, at us. It does. Yes, yes. yes. It does. The name Lord. of Jesus, the Bible says, devils have to flee. Yes, Lord. They can't stay in the same place yes. when you yes. speak the name of Jesus because there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes. And there is nobody. Somebody say nobody. Nobody. Nobody like Jesus.
myself away so that you can use me then after I give myself away I surrender I surrender a declaration of selflessness it simply suggests that God, I don't have anything. God, I'm not anything without you. Let that be our worship. Let that be our declaration today. That we want to surrender all to God. And that we want to give ourselves away so that we can be used 
by him. Thank you so much, praise team, for reminding us of just how selfless we should be in worship and how it's not about us, but it's about Jesus. We didn't come for any shape, form, or fashion, but we come to lift up his holy name. The Bible says that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The scriptures are clear that God assigns persons who have been called to preach and teach the word of God. And that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We're grateful that God has given us a shepherd on today who preaches and teaches and lives the word of God. We want you to pray with him and for him that God will use him in a very special way on today that he might be able to speak to our hearts, that we might be made the richer and the better. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds with the song of sermon preparation. Yes to your will, yes to your way. Whatever you decide to do, Lord have your way. Church, say amen again. Certainly we are thankful and appreciative for our praise team and uh, our musicians. Amen. We thank God for all that they do. I realized that uh, this morning, uh, I think John and Shay need to go. Uh, that their great aunt funeral is going to be today. So we, what, I should say that aunt funeral is going to be today. Not great aunt, but aunt funeral is going to be today. And then they go to the last in Tennessee, so I told them they need to, to go. Amen. I'd be traveling down the highway, uh, going, driving too fast. Amen. I am thankful and appreciative for all that God does. Amen. He's a mighty God, an awesome God, and I'm just appreciative of his love and his mercy. The Lord has put a word in my spirit. I want you to pray with me and pray for me. I'm a believer that everything that we need is in the word of God. I believe God speaks to everything that we encounter in life. It's our opportunity and our blessing to learn from God's word so we can navigate this world in which we live in. It's only when you and I use the word of God as a tool to navigate this world it's our life made better. Today the Lord has put an unusual message in my spirit. I want you to pray with me and pray for me uh, that he allows me to communicate in a way that's relevant and on time and will speak to us today in the things that we are dealing with. There's three things I want to accomplish in this message this morning. I want us to acknowledge, learn from it, and learn how to navigate around the thesis of the sermon this morning. This morning our message is found in, in the gospel according to Matthew and reading from the NLT, uh, the New Living Translation. Jesus says, after the disciples, afterward the disciple asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast out that demon. You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move here to there, and it would move. 
nothing would be impossible. From that narrative, I want to lift this particular thought, the doctrine of impossibility. The doctrine of impossibility. I want you to pray with me as we try to accomplish three things in this message, to acknowledge the doctrine, to learn what it teaches us, and how to navigate around it. Let us pray. Father God, I come right now in the precious name of Jesus the Christ. I come, O oh Lord, asking that you would give me strength to stand, give me clarity of mind and clarity of thought. I pray, O oh Lord, that you allow me to decrease at this moment and that you will increase. I pray, O oh Lord, for a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit that you allow me to speak a word that will give glory to you and be edifying for your people. Bless now as only you can. As in the name of Jesus I do pray, and for his sake, amen. I've learned in my time of preaching some over 40 years that often it's easy for preachers to read a text and get what we call the low-hanging fruit. The low-hanging fruit in this text is simply talk about faith. And having faith in God, nothing's impossible. That's the low-hanging fruit. But in this text, I saw something that was obvious to me, hidden within the text, and that is that there are some things that are impossible. I've learned in life, amen, that sometimes we just don't know, amen. And we need to be on up sometime that I don't know everything. That's the second thing in life, if we're going to be helpful and truthful to ourselves, we need to know that God has not given us the power to do all the things that we want to do. That sometimes we got to ask somebody else to help us to do what we need to do for ourselves. I've learned a second thing in life, that sometimes, amen, you be careful with folks that have an opinion by everything. Amen. That some folks have an opinion by everything. I've learned to tell folks I know what I know, and what I don't know I don't know, and I don't pretend to know what I don't know. Y'all better hear me. Because I, I, want, I want other folks to be able to help me where I am insufficient. In other words, I want God to help me, where, amen, and bless me and give me the strength that I need to deal with things when I can't deal with them by myself. It's in this narrative, amen, that I saw behind the text, amen, this doctrine of impossibility. You see, in this particular narrative, Jesus has taken three of his main disciples, James, Peter, and John. He's taken them to a high mountain. Most preachers and theologians refer to the mount as the Mount of Transfiguration. It's on that moment, on that mount, that Christ transfigured himself. The Bible says an unusual thing happened to him. He's on that mount, his face started to shine, his clothes turned white, and there appeared on that mount Moses and Elijah. Peter, James, and John are frightened out of their mind. They don't know what has happened. Amen. And they began to say, we need to build three tabernacles. A voice come from heaven and said, this is my son, hear him. And then that vision disappeared. Jesus taps them on that shoulder, and he says to them uh, in a manner, I am Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. You want to know it, where there only people one tabernacle be, what well, there's a tabernacle unto me, amen. And then the Bible moved from the mountain to the valley. Somebody need to know, you can't live your life always on the mountain. Every now and then, you gotta come down to the valley. I've learned most time in life, the work is not done on the mountain, but the work is done in the valley. We have a way of saying amen. It's, it's in the trenches of life that God calls us to work, amen. It's not in these comfortable pews that we're sitting on, but it's outdoors, out yonder in the field that God has called us to work. It's in the trenches in life, it's in the valley of life that God has called us to work. But when you read that particular narrative, you discover, amen, amen, that's a young boy that has a sickness. He's falling out, amen, he can't help himself. And while Jesus is on the mountaintop, 
and the other disciples in the valley, the man brings his son to Jesus. Y'all better get this. Amen. There's fun folks, amen, going to come to you because who you say you represent. Amen. You say you represent Jesus Christ. I got a problem. And you say you represent Jesus Christ. You walk with him. You know him. I got a problem. Can you help me with my problem? And while Jesus was on the mountaintop with Peter, James, and John, there was a sick boy in the valley. His father loves him. He brings them to the remainder of the disciples and said, can you help my son? They cannot help his son in that moment. Amen. Y'all better pray with me. Amen. Amen. And they bring him, and it says, amen, they could not cast out the demon that was in the young boy. Jesus come down. He's upset. Amen. He, bring, he brings the boy, brings him to me. He casts out the demon. And it's at that particular moment that while the disciples are with him, they asked him why we could not do it. Help me, and why we could not do it. It was in that moment that I saw the doctrine of impossibility, amen, amen. That was the doctrine of impossibility. They could not do, amen, what God had given them the power to do. Can I help somebody? And I learned that this lesson teaches us, amen, if y'all will help me up in the, in the boot, amen, put my points on the board, amen, amen, y'all up there sleeping, amen, 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 y'all up there sleeping, amen. I've learned, amen, the first thing I want to share with you, amen, that the divine objective cannot be achieved with human methodology, amen. For some reason, amen, those boys in the valley, amen, were trying to accomplish, amen, a divine objective with, with human methodology. Somebody need to get that right now. You cannot, amen, achieve a divine objective with human methodology. You can't do it the way grandmama done it. You can't do it the way daddy do it. Did it. You got to do it the way Jesus said do it. Amen. Do I have a witness this morning? Amen. You cannot accomplish a divine objective with human methodology. Amen. Come on, help me. Come on, y'all help me up there. Amen. Y'all help me. Amen. Y'all going to sleep on me. Amen. You're going to sleep on me. Amen. You're going to sleep on me. Amen. So you cannot accomplish a, a divine objective, amen, with, with, with human methodology. The second thing I saw in that text, amen, was simply this, amen. Don't allow your failure to determine your identity. Amen. Do I have a witness up in here? Don't allow your failures, amen, to determine your identity. A whole lot of folks allow folks to determine you by how you, when you fail, amen. Amen, everybody's going to fail. Matter of fact, help failing, amen, is simply a process that we go to promotion, amen. Sometimes you got to fall down in order to get up. But sometimes you got, you got to fall down even to appreciate what it means what, to stand up, amen. Amen, you never know, amen. You never know what it means to have money in your pocket till you live without having money in your pocket. Do I have a witness in here? Amen. Sometimes you got to fall down in order to appreciate standing up. So don't allow folks to determine your identity by your failure. Amen. Somebody said Abraham Lincoln failed a whole lot of time before he came to the president of the United States. We don't know him by his failure, but we know him by his success. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? Amen. So don't allow folks to determine your identity by your failure. Every now and then, you're going to fail, amen. Nobody going to get it right all the time. Anybody know about get it right all the time? Amen. Nobody get it right all the time. You're going to fail sometime in this life. Can I help somebody? You've got to learn to, amen, to be real with yourself, amen, if Jesus is going to help you, amen. The reason God can't help some of us, amen, because we're going through life pretending to be who we not are, amen. You've got to learn to be real with yourself, and when you read with yourself the Holy Ghost can help you to get over your hanging up amen do I have a witness in this house so I want to say man don't allow your failures to determine your identity amen amen quit letting folks amen talk about what you used to be to you yeah, I used to be but I ain't what I used to be anybody can say I ain't what I used to be amen I'm glad I'm not what I used to be, amen. And I'm not what I used to be because of the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. Do so I have a witness in this house, amen. Amen. The third thing I saw in this text, amen, 
Faith is God's alternative for human capacity. Amen. You see, what makes things impossible is that we don't have the capacity. The word capacity deals with two things, your ability to receive and your ability, amen, to, uh, not, to contain. Amen. So faith becomes a a booster, amen, for human capacity, amen. There are stories and narratives of folks, amen, doing strange things, demonstrating enormous amount of strength when they are traumatized. There have been documents where people pick up cars all by themselves when they are traumatized. And let me tell you, when you have faith, amen, will allow you to do something that you humanly cannot do by yourself. Do I have a witness here? How, anybody ever done anything? Amen, you, and you know it wasn't your natural power, but it was the supernatural power of Jesus Christ working in your life at that moment. It wasn't you. You know it wasn't you. And that's why I've learned, amen, to give credit to my almighty God, amen, when he moves me in a way that I know I didn't do it by myself, amen. Matter of fact, I need to tell y'all something. You didn't get up on your own this morning, man. You didn't get here safely by yourself this morning. It's because of the love and the supernatural power of Jesus Christ that got you safely here this morning, amen. Faith is God's alternative for human capacity. What you don't have humanly, faith will give it to you, amen. You may not know some things, faith will give it to you, amen. That's why I tell folks the Holy Ghost allow you to see the word from God perspective. You can read it with a carnal eye. When you read the word of God with a carnal eye, you'll get it wrong every time. But when you read it through faith of Jesus Christ, you'll get it right every time. Amen. The faith in God makes up for amen, human capacity. Amen. Can I, come on, work, work with me up there this morning. I'm not going to hold you long. I'm not going to hold you long. To work with me this morning. Amen. The fourth thing I saw in this lesson was simply this. That faith in Jesus Christ neutralized human impossibility. Amen. Let me say it again. Faith in Jesus Christ neutralized human uh, uh, impossibilities. Amen. Let me put it like this. An eight, ounce of an eight ounce glass cannot carry a glass, of, cannot hold rather a glass of water. Let me say it again. An eight ounce glass cannot hold a gallon of water. But here it is. An eight ounce glass can carry a, gl a gallon of water. Somebody didn't get that. Let me say it again. An eight ounce glass cannot hold a gallon of water. But an eight ounce glass can carry a glass of water. Somebody didn't get it. Somebody, 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 still somebody. Get it. An eight ounce glass cannot hold a gallon of water. But an eight ounce glass can carry a gallon of water. It's a gallon of water right here. Amen. I got an eight ounce glass. Amen. If I'm going to carry it to Michael there, I got to pull eight ounces, go and dump it. Pull another eight ounces, go and dump it. It couldn't hold the whole gallon, but it could carry the whole gallon. Do I have a witness up here? Y'all better stay with me. You better stay with me. Amen. Amen. So uh, faith in Jesus Christ, amen, neutralized human impossibility. Amen. Anybody glad you know Jesus this morning? Anybody know you glad? No, anybody really know him? Don't fool me now. Anybody know that God has worked in your life? Amen. That he neutralized your impossibility. Amen. He neutralized your impossibility. Amen. Amen. What you couldn't do, amen, he allowed you to do. Anybody glad you know him right now? Say yes. Amen. Amen. Say yes. Amen. And then the fifth thing I'm going to share with him, get out of your way. Amen. I'm going to get out of your way. It's simply this. The doctrine of impossibility teaches that it is only in Christ that we can move beyond our human impossibility. Oh man, I need to say that again. Let me say it again, let me say it again. The doctrine of, amen, of impossibility teaches that it's only in Christ that we can move beyond our human impossibility. Amen, amen. I, 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 I need to say it again so somebody didn't get it. The doctrine, listen, you got to acknowledge something. You see, quit, amen, amen, pretending that things are not there. The doctrine of impossibility teaches that it's only in Christ that we can be moved beyond and human impossibility. Amen. What up your faces in the morning? morning? Tell Jesus about it, man. Do I have a witness, man? If you don't have no money this morning, tell Jesus, amen. The word said the callous on the hill are his, and the gold is his, amen. If you're sick this morning, tell Jesus about it. 
Do I have a witness? Amen. Whatever you're going through, amen, tell Jesus about it. Amen. It's only when I realize my impossibility that I look at the possibility of Jesus Christ. That's why the word said all things are possible with him. Anybody believe this morning that all things are possible with him? Somebody didn't believe that, amen. They, they saw, amen. They saw, amen, in the olden time when, when they, Moses was died, amen. Don't know where he was buried, but he died, amen. They saw, amen, where David was buried, amen. They saw where the, all the old prophets were buried, amen. And they thought, the devil thought, amen, that one day when he got Jesus Christ and he hung him on that cross, he thought that day when he put Jesus Christ on that cross and purged him on the side, he thought when he put Jesus Christ in that buried man tomb, he thought that he had him in the tomb, but he didn't know that, amen, the impossibility of human possible, amen, were only made possible by Jesus Christ. Jesus said, amen, no man takes my life, amen, no man takes my life, Amen. And because no man take me, I'm going to rise. And, and what seemed to be impossible, God did it on that third day. Anybody know that God did it on that third day? What seemed to be impossible that no man could get up beyond his grave. What seemed to be out of the phantom of man imagination, God did it on that third day. And Jesus got up. Didn't he get up? With all power in his hand. And I'm going to tell somebody, you can't nobody turn you around when you're walking in the favor of Jesus Christ, when you know Jesus, you have a real relationship with Jesus, you can do anything and everything because what has not been stored in you naturally will be made up by the supernatural of Jesus Christ. Power, amen, working in you. And that's why I'm glad, amen. That's why I walk with my head hanging high. I may not know everything, but I know somebody that know everything. Anybody know anybody? I know somebody that know everything. And I come to you tell you, I'm glad that I have a relationship with him. And that's why I'm glad that I am, am his brother. And you ought to be his sister. Amen. And when you, you are his brother and you are his sister, he will give you the same power that he has. That you can walk, amen. You can talk like, amen. And nobody can hold you back because what is impossible, he has made it possible by his will and power. May God bless you and may God keep you, man. This is a doctrine of impossibility. Teaches me, amen, that I need to lean and I need to depend on Jesus Christ. That's why they merely, it teaches me that whatever I'm going through, it will happen as long as I surrender to Jesus Christ. If you want to overcome the impossibilities of your life. Learn how to surrender to Jesus Christ. May God bless you and may God keep you. If you want to overcome those impossibilities in your life, learn how to surrender to Jesus Christ. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I thank God. I thank God that I have a relationship with him that was impossible for me is not impossible for him. And because I am his own, because I am his own, he'll never let me down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is good. He's good, y'all. All the time. All the time. He's good all the time. We're going to stand an invitation to the discipleship. I, w I only have one person with my evangelistic team. Come on, uh, come on, a uh, deacon and a preacher. Come on with me, a uh, deacon and a preacher. Come on down here. We've been blessed to have virtual members of Second Baptist. We even have a virtual member who pays her tithes every month, make a journey to Nashville, she's out of state, once a year to work in ministry here. We thank God for our virtual members, and you can be a virtual member today. Simply email us, let us know who you are, and we'll make sure not only you enjoy the things to go here, but we'll find work for you in the ministry, wherever you are that you can use your gifts and talents 
for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so if you're with us today, we, we extend to you an opportunity to become a part of this ministry. God's going to bless this ministry above measures. I know that in my heart. God is getting ready to do something here in Old Hickory, Tennessee. And I'm not saying we're the only one he can work in and work through. But God has called us here to do a great work. I am, I am sure, I'm confident of that. And so we extend to you opportunity to come, be a part of this ministry, Christian experience, a bad letter, a candidate for baptism. If you listen to us and you have not accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, just bow right now and say, Lord, I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe you're born of a virgin. I believe that you died at a cross call on go God the hill and that you rose that third and fourth day for my and because of the shedding of your blood my sins have been covered accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior today allow him to come in your heart walk according to his word and be saved according to his grace and mercy thank you Lord if there be one God love you. God want the best for you. We extend to you opportunity to come. Simply email us your name, your email address, and we'll get in contact with you. May God bless you. May God keep you. It is the doctrine of human impossibility that teaches us why we need to surrender to the possibilities of Jesus Christ. May God bless you. May God keep you. That's my prayer. You may take your seat. Those will first today may take your seat. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you've been blessed by the message this morning. There are things in the scripture that teaches us why we need Jesus. And this is a narrative that teaches us why we need Jesus. Remember, you cannot accomplish divine objective with human methodology. May God bless you, may God keep you, is my prayer. Amen, if you would now stand for the final benediction. bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God that are fully revealed in Jesus Christ be yours this day. In Jesus' name, let us all sing together. Amen. 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 Everyone together.
Go in peace and return in love. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.